Okay, welcome back to the channel. Hi everyone, Kenobi here. Uh, before we get started on the next build, um, I wanted to just kind of catch you up uh, what's been happening here. Um, yesterday would have been uh, September 10th, Saturday. I attended the uh, Silicon Valley Classic 7. This is a local contest here in San Jose. And it was an absolute, an absolute blast. It was a lot of fun. I got to see some old friends. I got to make some new ones. Um, the vendors were excellent. I ended up only buying one thing, uh, an older Batman uh, Revell kit for my son, who went with me. He's five and a half, and he got to enter some models. Um, he took a second and a third place in his category, sub-junior category. And I'm very fortunate that I uh, got a second for my OV-10A Bronco. I took a, a third place for the uh, SA-9 Gaskin, a second place for the GPA Jeep. And I uh, swept the AFV category, the close top uh, category, uh, with my Shilka taking third, the M1A1 Abrams taking second, and my Striker M1134 taking first. And I'm happy to report that I even took uh, best armor for that Striker. So that was quite an honor. Um, I'll put an image up here to kind of show you what it looked like. Um, yeah, it's just a fantastic contest. I just absolutely love attending those things. It's just so fun to hang out with people who enjoy the hobby as much as I do. Um, always, always super fun. So that's where we're at so far. Uh, this is the day after, um, and I'm just going to jump right into a new kit. This is a, the, um, the raffles were good. We got a lot of kits, but nothing that I'm like really dying to jump on. A lot of them are going to be really built by my son and eventually my, my daughters. Um, I because they're just they're just older kits nothing that I'm really interested in um, There might be one or two in there that I'll that I'll take a look at at some point But for now we're gonna go with something that I already have in the stash and that is the Tacum T54B This kit here Okay um, I received this one as a gift uh, I think it was a Christmas gift last year uh, it's one I've been wanting and just very excited to, to get a chance to work on it. Um, <clears throat> the reason I'm wanting to build this is because I want to do an Iraqi version. And I'd like to do an abandoned version from uh, Desert Storm. So that's going to be the plan. I was considering putting it on a base. I haven't completely committed to that idea just yet. But I might put it on a base of sand or um, some sort of street. Uh, where the vehicle has been left. Um, okay, so I'm just going to go through, kind of take a look at the instructions, and then tr pretty much just jump in um, on the kit. I did want to kind of talk about a little bit of my plan here. The plan's still formulating, but what I'm looking at is just basically a vehicle that was just left behind, right? Everybody just jumped out, they just gave up. Uh, we hear that this sort of thing did happen in Desert Storm, happened quite often actually. I didn't necessarily want to put any any bullet holes or any um, you know any sort of other uh, arms fire in the vehicle. I didn't want to have like the top blown off or anything like that. I was just going to be straight up abandoned. That said, I would like to weather it quite a bit. Um, you know, have our regular kind of chipping effects, our streaking effects, uh, certainly a lot of sand effects. Um, I'm also thinking about taking up one of these. Um, uh, these flaps or these fenders and just sort of bringing it up. Um, I've seen a lot of photos in a couple of my books that showed that. Uh, I'm questioning whether or not I'm going to use the um, the piece of wood or put a piece of wood there or not. I'm probably going to leave off one of the cans. I noticed also that the cans rusted very very heavily so that'll be fun. I'm going to tackle that. Um, some rusting effect. <clears throat> rusting is an effect I tend to stay away from. Um, it's that's a boy that's a hot debate in the model world whether whether to rust or not and I just have a hard time finding rust on a lot of vehicles um, these tanks being the exception so we're gonna go ahead and rest that one but I don't want to get to that debate you're welcome to put your opinion in the comments um, this is yeah that's one of boy that's one of the one of the big topics when you're on Facebook or, or YouTube Everybody's got an opinion about that one way or the other. It's going to be a pretty standard um, sand gray kind of color. I'm looking to mix these three colors. We're looking at deck tan, sky gray, and then just the standard 
Tamiya White. Um, I think if I mix probably all of these, you know, one part each or maybe even um, two parts gray, one part deck tan, one part white, that might give me just the right color. Um, the colors did vary on these vehicles, so I'm just going to go through some of my books and find the the, the shade or the, the tone of gray that that I like the most, and that's how I'm going to pick it. So this is interesting. <laughs> Step one, they're asking for me to fill in or to remove some pieces here, but they're not present. So I'm guessing this is on a different version, but I'm surprised that the instructions are inaccurate in that regard. Okay, well. Okay, so now I want to tackle something else I'm seeing here on the first step. Um, there's this insert uh, in the instructions, this sort of box here. And strangely enough, it's asking me to remove these massive sections from the hole. The question is, how do I go about this? And I could scrape, right? Or remove chunks of it with the blade. Um, I could probably work with a razor saw. Yeah, you know, kind of coming at it. I don't know exactly how because this isn't flush. So that would be kind of out of the question. I could potentially scribe it out, but I'm trying not to. You'll notice there's a lip here. Well, this is the this is the part I want to keep because it runs through its actual the actual wall here, and I just want to remove the surface material. So I think the what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go at it with some clippers and go at it like that and just work it down, okay? Uh, these are the Tamiya uh, cutters. They're for a little bit more delicate work. Um, I don't think I have anything that's a little bit more aggressive. So we're gonna, we're gonna stick with these for now and then probably invest in some Xeron clippers or something else, okay? Because apparently we need that. So let's start with these here. I'm gonna try to stay relatively flush, but if I leave excess, it's easier to remove excess than it is to, to fill it in with putty or something. So let's just go ahead and try to keep it as straight as we can. And go. All right, now I'm not gonna be able to get the cutters to go further in. So what I do is I snip this part off. Okay, and then continue on. Okay, I'm going to be careful to look and make sure I'm not taking off any, any of that wall there. And this is rare. I don't normally encounter kits where this is needed. At least not the newer Takum or you know, AFE Club kit, so that's alright. It seems to be working just fine. These are just flying off to my shirt. I should uh, set a good example here and go ahead and wear some protection over the eyes. Good to have a set of goggles like these. All right, here we go. Let's continue on. And as I showed, you know, there's many ways to do the same thing. There's many ways to do something, but there's always kind of an easier, more efficient way. And I, clippers, I find are the best way to just remove chunks of plastic rather than sitting there with a razor or anything like that. So now I'm going to want to go over the side and I'm gonna, it's just enough, a little too much to, to need a knife rather than, um, um, than sanding sticks. I have a fairly, um, I have some really aggressive coarse ones. <laughs> I'm not gonna use that. So we'll just, we'll work it with a knife and take our time. Again, this is a new blade and I've already scratched off another section of it, so let's be careful. This is a brand new blade, that's what we want. So I'm going to go with the sandy stick now. I've got it down pretty good. And this is a, at this point I would say kind of a medium grit level. And when I sand, I like to go in one direction. Make sure I'm not shaking any cameras or anything. Okay. 
and then to go in opposite direction. All right. And after a while, I like to use uh, the sandy stick sort of um, cleaning bar. You can see it moves on the material. This is a, more for like a circular saws, like th those wheels for circular saws, but this works great for sanding sticks. So I like to go in one direction and then in a different direction. The idea being that as we're scraping, we're removing material, but then leaving these little va valleys and, and hills, right? These little mountains. So if I go like that and then I go this direction, I'm now scraping off the mountains. If I keep going in this direction, I'm not really taking off the top material. So I take off the top material by going this way. And really the best, I think ultimately, if you think about that that way, the best method then is circular. So you're just sort of achieving all of those movements, okay? so. I'll, I'll go in circular, I'll go in um, sort of perpendicular to each other. See, and then now this way. Circular motion, go the other direction, go back around. All right, let's take another look. That side is pretty well done. There's a little bit of a shadow there. I'll, I'll take a look at that, see if it's a problem, but I think we got it down pretty good. Obviously, I have to do the other side next, so but I'm not going to bore you in this video. But that's how I deal with those sorts of problems. All right, thanks again for watching. Uh, please do hit subscribe, hit that bell. Please like the video and please share the video. Really appreciate uh, everyone watching these videos, and I hope you're having a good time. So, thanks again. Bye.